hello, all of you amazing, creative, beautiful authors in the making. Welcome to day four of Create Your Blue Your Book Blueprint. We all have a story to tell. I am so honored and I am excited because most people never make it past day one. And you are here on day four which means you are already ahead, above, beyond what most people are willing to do for their dreams. And so I just want to say that in itself is worth celebrating, worth pausing and seeing, because it's that same determination, that same consistency that's going to take you from one day I might write a book to day one, which you're doing, you're on day four, uh, to it is done. It is done. It is done. And unlike 80% of the rest of the world, you will actually be holding your book in your hands. You will actually be sending your book out into the world to change lives, make a difference, expand minds. That's what you're doing by showing up on day four. That in itself is just, I am in awe of you. I, I love it. So, uh, I'm Marja, of course, and welcome to Author Writers Academy and the Create Your Blueprint five day webinar challenge. Um, if you have already watched uh, and been here or watched on the replays days one through three, congratulations. If you've done the work, that is in your workbook and your homework, double and triple congratulations, because it is, oh God, how often do we listen to something, hear something, understand something, and then do nothing? Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. And so what we're doing by actually doing the work, doing the the, answering the questions in the workbook, answering the questions in the homework, what we're actually doing is applying the knowledge that we're gathering. And that's what propels us forward and puts us in momentum mode. So we are actually making a difference. If you do everything in the workbook, do your homework, there is no way you're going to stop because it's real. It's something that's tangible. It's something that you see taking shape. It's no longer these thoughts in your head that are running around invisible on this invisible hamster wheel and that never goes anywhere. Suddenly it's out in the world. It's real, it's tangible, and you're going to, it's going to pull you into momentum so that you continue on your journey until you get the results that you deserve to be a published author. Um, it is an incredible day today. Um, like I said in the in the Facebook. Today is the meat and potatoes of your book. I mean, it's great to have a, an outstanding title that captures and gets attention. It's, you know, it's great to, to craft your topic and, 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 and know precisely who you're writing for and why. It's wonderful that you've broken through all of those mindset blocks that were, may have been holding you back or slowing you down. But Come on, there has to be something inside of the book, right? Inside of the cover. So what are we putting between that amazing cover with that beautiful title and subtitle and that back cover, which will probably have your smiling face on it and something wonderful about you? What are we putting between those pages? This is Tell Your Story, Capture Your Wisdom, our manuscript outline. All right, so <clears throat> if we scroll in, to, we scroll to our day four. Now, from yesterday, if you have done the homework, at least tentatively, you now have a title and a subtitle to work from. Now, again, this is not anything that's written in stone. So <clears throat> often we're reluctant to put any something down in writing because we think that we can't change it. We think that it's suddenly controlling us and blocking us or putting us in a box. And the truth is, there is no box. 
write down your idea right now for your title and your subtitle. Um, at the end of your book, you'll revisit it again. And you'll see if it's still congruent with what you've written. You'll see if it still matches, if it still works, if it still resonates with you, uh, your ideas, and your ideal client. And then you can make those uh, little two millimeter or major adjustments if you need to. But my hallucination is you won't need to. You might change it, maybe a word or a phrasing or, or turn some things around, but it's usually pretty on point. Because what happened is once you clarify, this is my one topic, this is my title about that topic, this is the subtitle that, that explains that title or explains the results that they're getting. Once you've done that, you've already focused your mind, focused your thoughts, your stories, your attention into supporting that. So it's usually a really great um, framework that naturally and organically emerges. At the top of your workbook, put in that tentative title that you've come up with. Put in that tentative subtitle that you've come up with. And again, if you would love some feedback from, the, uh, from myself and the other members of the group, uh, put a poll in our group in Facebook for your ideas for your title, your ideas for your subtitles, and let us uh, share feedback and ideas because by stepping out of our comfort zone, and again, getting out of that little voice in our head that says it's not good enough, it's not ready, it's not right, people will make fun of me, people won't understand, I think it's stupid. Yeah. None of that is the truth. The opposite of all of those statements is the truth. And for the small percentage of people that fit into that category, those are not your ideal clients. Those are not your ideal readers. Those are not your target audiences. The people that you're writing for, that you're creating for, they're going to love you. They're going to be grateful for you. And so I want you to focus on them. Focus on that feeling, that connection, and share your potential titles and your potential subtitles in the group. Because we're here to support you, to help you move the needle ahead, to go from, um, to, so you stay out of that category of one day I might. Right now you're in that one day, no, I am now. I am now writing it. And, and you keep going on that momentum. And you'll be like, it's done. I have my book. I have my book. I have my book. It's done. Yay. And you'll be celebrating. And you'll be cheering. And you'll be sharing. And people will be. The most amazing thing is when somebody quotes something in your book back to you. Oh my God. The first time that happened, I was speechless. I couldn't believe that the day had come where what I was sharing, I actually was tangibly able to see, able to hear, able to feel that it was making a difference for somebody. And I've had clients experience that as well with their books. And it is a life-changing moment because that one person quoting your book um, on their social media or, or back to you or, or out to someone or quoting you when they're talking with somebody. That means you've impacted their hearts and their minds. You've expanded based on your courage and your wisdom and your desire to put your book out there. So I'm so looking forward to celebrating that moment with you as well. So now you have your title and your subtitle. Now, when you're looking at that title and that subtitle, you know what you're focused on, you know what you want to do. And now start asking yourself some questions. Again, this is not writing out word for word. You're not there yet. So many times we want to jump ahead, far, far ahead into the journey. You know, we want to um, graduate from college before we finish first grade. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't uh, make any sense and we're not going to be successful. But if we take it grade by grade, step by step, we graduate, we get successful, we get results. Um, and so look at your, your questions. What are the seven to nine things that tell your hero's journey about the title and subtitle that you've chosen? 
Now, what a hero's journey is, it's basically like if you see in a movie, you know, you have this, this, this character, this main character, and they're at a certain level, they're doing something, there's things going on in their life, and then suddenly they make a decision. And they break free, they break through, they break away from whatever was happening in their life. And then stuff happens, and it's going up and down, and that's where the adventures and the challenges and the dares and the internal struggles and the external voices and all of the stuff and the, and the enemies opposing from the outside and the enemies in here opposing them and, and all of this push and pull and tension and transformation occurs. And then they break through and they come out on the other side. And on the other side of that journey, they're at a higher level. They're at another understanding. They're, they've hit a level of success that they maybe have not imagined that was possible. And so that, from here to here, usually to here and then back up, and then up here, that's the hero's journey. And you have experienced it, and so have I, in many, many parts of our lives. This is amazing material. Whether, you know, I know somebody was uh, looking at uh, bringing in somebody else's life. They've also had this journey where they were at somewhere, they were struggling, they were feeling something, and then they, they, they had to break through and break free and they may have gone way down deep into a chasm and pulled themselves up and that that mechanism of how they pull themselves up um, the resources that they use the resiliency that they develop uh, and how they came out on the other side that is the hero's journey uh, well, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We have some more people uh, joining us. Welcome, Ausha. Good to see you again. Uh, thank you, Monica. I'm glad you're loving the tips in here. It is, you know, writing, I enjoy it so much. And what I enjoy is also seeing the, the commonalities, the process, the patterns to it. And once we understand that, we can actually extract them and, and, and do it. You know, a lot of authors make this journey so big and so hard, and that's why it doesn't get done. Whatever is complicated, whatever is hard, just doesn't get done. But when we break it down step by step, like you have in your workbook, like we're talking about in our time together, it's simple and it's easy. We're not looking at, okay, how do I finish this book today? How do I make this book today? We're not looking at that. We're looking at, okay, today, how do I break through my mindset? How do I deal with these voices in my head? How do I deal with these, uh, these voices outside who are maybe well-meaning and maybe not telling us that, hey, you can't write or you're no good or nobody needs what you're having. These voices come inside and outside. <laughs> you know what? The amazing thing is, some of the people at different parts in my hero's journey in life that objected to what I was doing the most, they were the ones that were on the other side celebrating and telling me how amazing I am and how they, they just knew it all the time and they were always rooting for me. And you're like, what? How many of you have experienced this? You know, and it's a, it's a funny, funny thing. But if we get sucked into those voices in our head that are telling us we can't for whatever reason, or those voices externally that may be fearful and listening to those internal voices of their own and projecting them outwards to us, if we get stuck there, our book never gets done. But instead, if we chunk down and say, okay, I've broken through those voices in my head, I'm going to continue to do that throughout this process. Because it's a continuation, this is not a one-time thing. Those, voice, those voices will come back. So deal with it and, and address it. Remember, you know how now to go from terror to truth. Flip it around, tell the opposite, and speak that truth. And if that terror is, write it on the paper and rip that terror up and throw it away. So then you go to, okay, what's my title? What's my subtitle? All right, why am I writing this book? Who is my ideal audience? See, these are small, bite-sized pieces. 
one question at a time with one answer, one question at a time with one answer, another question with another answer. This is the simple, easy, step-by-step, -step, easy, fun way to do it. Smile! Have fun doing this, people. <laughs> you know, our energy that we carry through this really makes a difference. So if you feel that, you know, we're feeling burdened or heavy or afraid or um, timid, that's when we need to shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Breathe deep. As you know, I'm a big proponent of breathing into our hearts. And take a slow, deep breaths. And listen to your inner wisdom and see where you're going and make the right decisions. And they're not even maybe they're not even right decisions, just make a decision. And then you can adjust along the way. One of my mentors, one of my main mentors, Luke, um, I'm gonna share a story with you that um, was this next step. And what's your next step? And that question was so powerful for me. I was in Fiji. And we were in a group and we were climbing a 50 foot pole and telephone pole of sorts. And at the top of the pole, um, there, we had to stand on the pole, which was like this big, it could barely fit both of my feet. And at the top of the pole, if you looked out, there was a trapeze bar swinging about 10 feet out past us. And I was on the ground and I'm not afraid of heights, so I figured, you know what, I can make my way up the pole. I actually kind of enjoy it. But the idea of standing up on top of the pole and having and not having that security of being able to grip onto the pole, it frightened me and it scared me. And I watched YouTube videos and I saw other people doing it and I tried to figure out their technique of standing up and, and when we were there and I'm on the ground and I'm looking and I'm trying to say, okay, how are they doing and how are we going to do it? And I went to Luke and I said, okay, um, I can make it up the pole, but how do I stand up? What exactly do I do? And he looked at me and he said, Marja, where are you? And I said, what do you mean? He said, where are you? I said, I'm standing on the ground. He said, then why are you asking me about what to do at the top of the pole when you're standing on the ground? What's your next step? And I said, um, my next step is to go put on my harness and my helmet. He said, then go do that. And <laughs> it seems so logical but we, how many times do we get caught up in looking at the top of the 50-foot pole and how do we do that when we haven't even put on our harness and helmet yet? And so I walked over and I put on my helmet and I put on my harness. And I walked back and he said, that is the only question you ask yourself from now on. What is my next step? And I was like, okay. And that has proven so helpful, not only in getting to the top of the pole, but in, in standing up, but in everything I'm doing in life, in my business, with my family, with myself, with my health, everything. What's my next step? And instead of looking at this big, big thing, like, how do I publish my book? Try looking at the next step. Where are you now? What's your next step? And uh, what happened was I got, um, I got in line, I was a second to go to the pole, and I climbed up, and as soon as I got a little bit high off the ground, suddenly those heights did feel a little bit scary. And I, I said, um, and when that fear started to kick in, and said, okay, this is enough, you don't need to go anymore. And I said, what's my next step? I said, my next step is to move my left leg up. I move my left leg up. What's my next step? My next step is to move my right hand up. I found the, the, the latch and move my, my the, the uh, bar and I move my right hand up. What's my next step? And my right leg, my left arm. And I kept asking myself, what's my next step? Over and over and over again. Until suddenly I was at the top of the pole and I didn't know what to do. 
Because remember, I did not know how to stand up. I didn't even know how to get up to the top of the pole to have the option to stand up. And, but the question never changed. And so I asked myself, what's my next step? And this is breaking this question, was breaking through all of the fear and all of the apprehension and all of the, the tension that I was feeling. Because the pole is not completely still, it's swaying like this. And I'm just like, what's my next step? My ne and then my brain immediately answered that question. What I heard was, you don't know what to do, you need coaching. And so I yelled, what do I do now? And then Luke, standing down at the ground, he said, now you're ready for the answer. And he coached me how to stand up on top of that pole, step by step, piece by piece, micro coaching. No, move a little bit further. You're almost there. Go around this way. And he walked me through piece by piece until I was standing on top of the pole. And when I got there, there was another level of fear, of apprehension, of unknown. And... I'm holding onto my harness like this for dear life because the pole is swaying like this and the wind is blowing and I'm, I have tension all over my body and I hear him say, let go of the rope. And I'm like, oh my God, is he crazy? I can't do it, I can't let go. And then, what's my next step? Release one hand. And I did. And I heard, take a breath, wait, pause, you're okay. And I said, what's my next step? Release my other hand. And it took a few moments, but I released my other hand. And I'm standing there at the top of the pole like this. And Luke says to me, now open your eyes and take it all in. And I paused and I opened my eyes. And there was this peace that radiated over me. And I looked at the rolling green hills of Fiji and the beautiful sun radiating down on my face. And I smiled. I said, this is amazing. And what I had never even thought about when I got that far, after I took it all in and I had my peace and my calm and my awe, I heard one of the other coaches say, is that your trapeze bar? Are you gonna are you gonna jump? And I had another decision to make. Am I going to jump? This is the equivalent of, you know, when we've gotten our book done, we have, we have we have our manuscript finished, and then we don't publish it. That jump, we don't or, or we publish it, but we hide it in the corner. We don't market it. We don't put it out into the world intentionally. That's another level of decision. And right there, I was coached into making that decision. It's like you can take the way down and you can just, you know, come off and that's fine. You've accomplished something. But what did you come here to really do? Are you going to jump? And I stood there and I looked and I said, I didn't come this far not to jump. And I leaped off of the pole onto the trapeze bar and felt my fingers around the bar and then came floating down to the ground. And I have equated that to so many things in my life that felt big, that felt overwhelming, that felt like it was too much to handle. What's your next step? So write in the comments, wherever you are with your book writing journey right now, what's your very next step? your micro step. What is your next step? Go on, share down in the comments what you think your next step would be. And this is no right or wrong answer. This is just making a decision. What's my next step? And if you're not sure, you have your workbook, you have the step by step. You have your heart. You have your intuition to guide you. You have your experiences. All of this helping you. What's my next step? So your next step today on day four is to take that title and that subtitle and start answering the question, why this matters to your reader? Why does that title, that subtitle, why does that topic matter to your reader? 
that why will propel you forward, that why will open you up, that why will allow you to be authentic and share and to know which parts of your story, which parts of your wisdom, which parts of your experience, which parts of your research to pull in and to use. This research with writing is her next step. Um, I love that. And you've identified your next step. Uh, I would urge you to break those apart. Your next step is research. Writing is another step. Whenever we're using conjunctive words like with, and, plus, we're seeing multiple steps. <clears throat> and again, that already gets, sometimes can get too much. So pulling down, so research is your next step. And just pulling out the information and collecting it. But also set a deadline for yourself so that you know when to stop collecting it. I know some potential authors that have been collecting research for a decade. And it may be a decade more, if they, if at all, if ever, that they write their book because they're stuck in that research stage. So set yourself an artificial deadline to stop researching. And so say, I'm going to research um, every day for two hours for one month, and then I'm done. 80% done is better than 100% never. Uh, Carla's next step is writing down the story no matter the order. I love it. This is the brainstorming part. And, you know, when she says writing down the story, you know, my, my understanding is, you know, what we talked about the other day. It's not about writing each word in its place perfectly. This is about getting it out of our head, jotting down our ideas, our thoughts, our bullet points, our, our and then start putting it together from there. But first, get it all out. Yeah, write down a story no matter what the order is. It's like a wonderful puzzle. You know, you have all the pieces, and then once you get them all faced up, you can start to see where they fit naturally, where it makes sense. Next question, where was I? This is about, again, your mess or your challenge or what it was that, that you face that you encountered, that that block, that hardship, whatever, that, that had you go down into that chasm that you had to figure out how to pull yourself out, how to pull yourself up. And all of these are true whether we're writing um, for whatever type of book we're writing. You know, even if we're writing, let's say you're writing a children's book, you know, there's something that is affecting um, the, the, the children in the story, there's something that's happening, there's um, a thought, there's, and it may be not as dramatic um, to us, but to a child it is. And one of our amazing authors from uh, Awa, uh, Christina, her book is about to, to become live. She's written this beautiful, amazing children's book. And in that, in her book, she addresses a very real situation that children are facing and, and offers help and a solution that bridge on how to get to the other side. And it's powerful. And so no matter what type of book you're writing, these things apply. Even if you're writing a how-to book about, like, let's say, your business, if you, want, if you want to juice it up and you want people to actually read it and get some meat and potatoes, I urge you to incorporate that and layer this into your book as well. I have some books here that are dry as Dale toast with no butter. It is, oh, <laughs> and if you can stay awake through it, you know, your brain is so numb that you can't even process what they're saying because they didn't use the tools and the techniques and the ideas that we're sharing here um, uh, this week. So it's great to get the information out, but isn't it better and more amazing to get the information out, information out where people will actually take it in, absorb it, and use it? I think that's a lot better. <laughs> I was just saying, I can't wait to write my book. I can't wait to read your book. I'm so excited. Yes. Oh. Let's see. The next question. What resource did I use, find, or make? Now, a resource is anything that helps you. It could be um, 
people that you spoke to. It could be an internal desire. It could be uh, a book that you read, a song that you listened to over and over and over to, that broke you out of whatever you were, were dealing with that gave you an answer or hope or something. It could be um, something that you learned along the way, whatever it was. Um, it could be that you chose a new career and, um, and, and why you chose it and how you did that and, and how you stepped into that and the, and the steps that you had to take in order to, to own that and use it. You know, there was something. And then ask yourself, what else? What other resources? What else? What other resources? And keep asking yourself that because when you dig deeper, you're going to realize and you're going to see all of the amazing steps you took. You get all of those little micro steps that you may have glossed over, that you may have forgotten. You start to uncover it and unleash it. And you're like, wow, I did that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, so question, so that's where the question three, four, five, what resources you use, find or make? What other resources? What else? And keep asking yourself that and keep jotting those down. Capture them, brainstorm them, and, and again, you're not writing them out uh, longhand, step by step, word by word, question by question. Just jot them down in bullet form or in a few sentences to capture the idea. So you, I mean, you know the stuff. Um, you know what happened. So just capture it so you can get the idea, the memory. Um, when you're researching, you know, again, jot down the the idea of what it is and um, and you know, in a couple of words, what you're, why you have that piece of information. And, and that's it. it. There's no need to edit it and use it and figure it out. And this has to go here and this, you know, don't put the puzzle together before you turn all the pieces over. <laughs> all right. Um, so <clears throat> let's see. Number, uh, number six, what action did you take? You know, like I said earlier, uh, knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. When we do something with the knowledge we have, that's what propels us and moves us forward. Am I right? You know, how many of us have learned something we didn't do anything with it? But how powerful is it? How amazing is it when we learn something and we actually use it? We actually take action. So what else did you do? What actions did you take? Start, uh, because this is really, really critical. Because our books are not just to tell, you know, hey, this is what happened to me. It's a great story. Yeah, okay. But, and more, and, and there are some like that, which is fine. But in my opinion, the next level book also tells your reader how they can do it too. That's why they're there. That's why they're reading it. Because they want to hear your authentic journey, your hero's journey, your story, what you've created, what you've done, and how amazing it is on the other side. But they also want to know how you got to the other side. So that they, too, can, they can shorten their journey and take the steps instead of trying to figure it out and, and spend weeks and months and years in the dark and possibly never get out. Your book is a light that's shining a faster bridge, a faster path, a faster way. And so tell them, what did you do? What actions did you take? What other actions did you take? Start to jot down those ideas because they were very specific. They're trackable. They're traceable. They're, it's, they're there. And so say, this is what I did. It's like a recipe. You know, if I give you a recipe for a cake, it doesn't matter if you're the best baker in the world or you've never, you know, this is your first time seeing an oven. If you follow the recipe step by step by step by step, you're going to get the same cake. And it may not look the same, you know, once you put the frosting on and everything else. Those are skills and habits to develop. But the basic cake will be the same. And... Yeah, so where are, and then tell them, where are you now? Sometimes we want to play small. We want to pretend that um, to ourselves or to the world, we want to hide our successes. 
Yeah, and I understand that, um, that inclination, because sometimes people, some people may be harsh and may be cruel and may be not um, as supportive as you would like. We've all experienced that, where people may lash out, you know, if nobody is opposing anything you're doing in your life, it's probably because you're not doing anything in your life. And that's the truth. And so if you're getting opposition, if you're getting uh, uh, pushback, if you're getting people say, I don't like this, and, and I don't see who you think you are, and, and why are you doing this? You're in the right place. You're doing something. Congratulations. Yeah. So, let's see. And where are you now? So explore that. Share it. You know, celebrate being on the other side. Celebrate it proudly, openly. Talk about the wins in your life. You've already shared your challenges and the hardships and 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 the, the and how you, you you broke free and the steps that you take that you took. Now share your win. Share the other side. Now I I've spoken on stages around the world for years, um, pre-COVID, and there there were a few speakers that I noticed would get on stage and. They would say, I'm amazing, I'm wonderful, here's me with my 15 Lamborghinis, here's me with my mansion, none of which they owned, probably. Um, here's, you know, me, and I did it all myself like this by the seat of my pants. You know, you can be as wonderful as I am too, just give me money. Ridiculous. <laughs> they weren't being authentic, they weren't being truthful, because all of us, have had, like I said, this hero's journey, this experience where we had to decide to break through, where things weren't going as well as we wanted it to, where, you know, something in our life wasn't working. And that's the honesty, that's the authenticity that your readers want to know. Because that's what they're feeling. That's what they're experiencing. You know, they're not living a, 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 a social media, Facebook, Instagram life where, you know, everything is beautiful and lovely and airbrushed and, and, and touched up. And I'm just going to show you the good stuff. I'm just going to show you the beautiful photo. This is how I wake up. <laughs> yeah, you've seen this, right? Oh, I woke up like this. Really, you woke up with your hair perfectly in place with lipstick on and, and, and makeup perfectly done and your, your, your shirt perfectly pressed? I don't think so. And often a lot, some people, they, um, they want to share their stories like that because it's, it feels safe. It feels like they're protecting themselves. But I urge you, creative authors, beautiful emerging authors, share all of your journey own it because all of it made you who you are today all of it brought you to where you are today <clears throat> in one of the groups that I'm in the Queens in Business Club uh, I'm one of the founding members of that and I posted something today where there was a caterpillar sitting at the table looking at a butterfly across when they're having coffee or something and and the caterpillar looks at the butterfly and says, you've changed and the butterfly says uh, we're supposed to you know, you're on your journey of changing, of evolving. And as your book emerges, you are also emerging. Um, you're you're going to experience that butterfly journey, that leap, that flight, that beautiful moment where you're standing on top of the pole, looking out and seeing the rolling green, green hills and feeling the sun on your face, published author, where you're going to leap and make that decision to publish your book and put it out in the world and focus on not the naysayers or the haters or anyone else that may appear but on that that reader that um, that you identified that you were writing for earlier in in one of the previous lessons you're going to focus instead on that person that you're helping your ideal reader I'm so, so excited. And then, after you share where you are now, your successes, your wins, and celebrate that. Because you earned it. You did it. And they can too. And that might be part of your final 
message to the reader. So some people call this your conclusion, um, and maybe a, few, a chapter or a few chapters. What is the final message to the reader? How would you sum up what you said? What are your final thoughts and information? Start jotting down. Again, you don't have to write it out right now, line by line. Just bullet point it. Just say, I would love them to know this. I would love them to remember that. I want them to feel this. I want them to understand that. I want them to, to, to remember that they can do this. I want them to, um, to go step by step, one, two, three, four, five, this is what they can do. This is where they'll get it. I did it, you can too. Whatever your final message is to the, to the reader. Uh, I have um, another amazing client. He's writing a fantastic, incredible health book with us. Um, it's beyond a health book. It's, it's something next level. And, and in there, he is shifting mindsets about and ideas about, um, about health care. And his, his final message to the reader is emerging so powerfully. I love working with him. And um, I love working with all my clients. Uh, and so that final message where at the end, the reader says, yes, thank you. I can do this too. Thank you, Alsha, for showing me your journey, for encouraging me, for, for, for being honest and authentic. Thank you, Anetta, for telling me what's possible. Thank you so much, Monica, for showing me. Uh, Carla, I appreciate you being open and real and putting your story out into the world. Yes, I am... Again, excited and honored. I'm looking forward to celebrating with you your next step. Whatever that is, whatever you have identified as your very next step. Are there any tips uh, to having, organizing all of the research and notes? Any program that uh, you use? Uh, well, personally, I don't use a program to do that. Uh, I do it myself. I do that for my clients. That's what I, I do um, as their their editor and their coach. I, I take all of their all of the research, all of the notes, all of the things that we've uh, created together. And remember, I, I had the analogy of that puzzle. When you have all the pieces turned over, you can see uh, you can see the pieces, and you can start seeing where they fit. You have the four corners of your puzzle because you you already have your title and your subtitle and why and who you're writing for. And now you start to pull those pieces in. Well, and you can see what relates to what. And so you have some pieces that say this relates to this topic and that relates to this topic. And this it's called chunking. And so you start chunking the pieces that fit together. The topics, the the the, okay, this research supports that, and this research supports that, and this statement goes here. And, and you just start moving it around and chunking it down into the pieces. And this is how you start filling in the chapters of your book. Each chunk is a chapter. So uh, hop into the Facebook uh, group, check out the homework, post your homework. Um, take this, these steps, take the action, next step, next step, next step. And, and keep going and encourage one another to keep going as well. Encourage one another and, so, and celebrate every time somebody takes another step. And I will see you all tomorrow for day five. This is really important, building your team to publish. This is fantastic. You wanna talk about rocket fuel to move you forward faster? Oh my God, <laughs> incredible. So I will see you tomorrow for day five, building your team to publish. Until then, bye.